Hey guys, um, I was going to wait and record the video when I could talk properly, but apparently that's not going to happen. So you're just going to have to um, endure me and my snuffliness. My apologies in advance. So section 6 is on completing the square. Um, so this is going to be a really handy way that you can easily um, change from standard form to vertex form. You can find information. It's also a nice way to solve quadratic equations. So what are the solutions of quadratic equations and how does factoring help us solve quadratic equations? So we're going to solve by completing the square and also by rewriting functions um, after we complete the square. So for our vocabulary, if x squared plus bx is not part of a perfect square trinomial, you could use the coefficient b, the number in front of b, and uh, to find a constant c so that when you add something onto the end, it makes it a perfect square trinomial. When you do this, you're doing what's called completing the square because you're going to make it into a perfect square trinomial. And to do that, you take b and divide it by 2, and then whatever that value is, you square it, and then you add it on to the end. That way, when you factor it, it's x plus whatever your, whatever your b over 2 is, quantity squared. Um, you'll see what we're talking about in a minute. <clears throat> so, first we're going to start easy, just finding the solutions of square roots. So this one, how would you solve it? If you wanted to find what x is, the first thing you would do is you would subtract 10 for both sides. You get 4x squared equals 36. Now what would you do? Divide by 4. So you get x squared equals 9. And then how would you get x? Take the square root of x. Square root of 9. What's the square root of 9? What times what makes 9? 3. Is there also another number times itself that makes 9? There sure is. What about negative 3? Negative 3 squared is also 9. So your square roots are going to give you two solutions. Let's do another one. This one. What would you do first? Well, you would add 10. So glad you asked. Oops. There we go. So I get 7x squared equals 35. And then divide by 7. x squared equals 5. The square root. So x equals the square root of 5 and the negative square root of 5. What about this one? Go ahead and pause it and solve for yourself. You can do it. All right, I got x is square root of 2 and a negative square root of 2. Hopefully you got that too. All right, so solving a perfect square trinomial. So if you look at this, x squared plus 4x plus 4, if we were to factor just that, x squared plus 4x plus 4, what would it look like? Well, let's start doing it this way. Okay, um, I know x and x both have to be positive, and one of my possible multiples of 4 that add up to be 4. Well, it's 2 and 2. Can you see that this is x plus 2 quantity squared? I sure hope so. So you get x plus 2 quantity squared equals 25. Now, how are we to solve this? If we have something squared, we take the square root of both sides. So I have x plus 2 equals 5 and negative 5. I have two possible solutions still. So now I set up each one. x plus 2 equals 5. x plus 2 equals negative 5. Subtract 2. x equals 3. x equals negative 7. Two solutions. Both are good. Okay, why don't you go ahead and pause and try this one. I want you to actually try it. Don't just like sit here and look at the video and be like, oh, but Miss Eckblad, you're going to do it for me in a second. No, I want you to actually try it. All right, as you can see, I got x equals 12 and x equals 2. Hopefully, you got that as well. If you did it, go back and check your work. Find out where you went wrong so you can fix this mistake now before you continue to make it. Okay. Now here's where we actually start completing the square ourselves. 
So what value we have to put in for x squared minus 10x in order to make this be a perfect square trinomial? Now, do you remember what we said from the vocabulary we had to do? b over 2 quantity squared. What's our b value? Negative 10. Negative 10 over 2 squared. Negative 10 divided by 2 is negative 5. And negative 5 squared is 25. So if we added x squared minus 10x plus 25 onto the end, does this make this a perfect square trinomial? Well, if we were to factor it, x minus 5 times x minus 5 would be your factor. So it's x minus 5 squared. See how that works? Math is so cool! Okay, so for this one, what value would we have to put on the end of this um, equation, expression, function, well, it's just an expression, in order to make this a perfect square trinomial? Well, do your b over 2 quantity squared. So that's 6 over 2 squared, which is 3 squared, which is 9. Okay, so that we'd have x plus 3 quantity squared. Okay, did you notice that the perfect square trinomials, the last one is always a plus sign? Always a plus sign. Okay, now we're going to solve by completing the square. Okay, in order to solve by completing the square, um, your x squared value must be 1. So no matter what you do, your x squared value must be 1. So if it's not 1, in order to complete the square, you have to divide everything by whatever your coefficient is. So I have x squared minus 12x plus 2 equals 0. Is this right now a perfect square trinomial? It is not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. And right over here, x squared minus 12x plus some value that I don't know yet equals a negative 2. Now, what do you remember from the very beginning of Algebra 1 when we started solving equations? What you do to one side of the equation, you must do to the other side of the equation. So if we're going to add a value over here, we also must add a value on the other side of the equal sign as well. Okay, so in order to figure out what that value is, we need to do that b over 2 squared. So our b is negative 12 over 2 squared, which is um, negative 6 squared, which is 36. So I'm going to add 36 to both sides of the equation. All right, now, when I factor this, this is x minus 6 squared equals 34. Are you with me thus far? Wrong button. Okay, things were not looking well. So I went back to look, and hopefully you figured out that I made a mistake right in the beginning. Yes, Ms. Ekblad makes mistakes. Just don't tell anyone. I keep telling you, don't tell anyone. Okay. So let's try this again. Um, 12 divided by 3 is not 12. It is 4. So let me fix all of this. Um, this, and this. And this, and get out that color again. Okay, so negative 4, hey, this looks much better. Negative 2 squared is 4. So I'm going to add 4 to both sides. Wow, this is already so much more fantastic. Okay, so this is x minus 2 squared equals 2. There we go. Now, square root both sides. So I get x minus 2 equals, I'm going to go ahead and write it as plus or minus the square root of 2. Because I know I have both the positive solution and the negative solution. Okay, to get x by itself, we add 2 to both sides. So x equals 2 plus or minus the square root of 2. Both solutions. Good. Um, I don't remember. I think Math Excel wants to write it as 2 plus square root of 2 and 2 minus square root of 2. I don't think they like you to use that plus or minus sign because maybe they think you don't understand what it means. But I'm going to assume you understand that plus and minus means that you add once and you subtract once, hopefully. 
Okay, moving on. All right, and then um, the last thing we're going to do is write it into vertex form. Now, in vertex form, the only difference is when we complete the square is that we keep everything on the same side instead of moving it to the other since we're not solving. We're just going to um, rewrite it all on the same side. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so for this one, our x squared value is 1, so we don't need to divide anything. So, who already um, points for Mrs. Ekblad? Okay, so we need to do our b over 2 squared. So we have 4 over 2 squared, which is 2 squared, which is 4. So we need to add 4. So y equals x squared plus 4x plus 4. I'm going to write this in parentheses so I remember this is my perfect square trinomial. Okay, I also have the minus 6 out here. Now, instead of adding 4 to the y over here, instead of adding 4, in order to keep this equation balanced, I could also subtract 4. Because in, es in essence, what I did over on this side of the equation is I added 4 and I subtracted 4. Which means I added nothing, even though I really did. Kind of. I just rearranged things. Okay, um, so now I can factor this. This is x plus 2 squared minus 10. Look, it's in vertex form, guys. Oops, I forgot the square. It's in vertex form. So what is the vertex of this? My vertex is negative 2, negative 10. What is my y-intercept? That one's super easy. You go back to your original equation. Your y-intercept is the c-value. So 0, negative 6 is your y-intercept. Look how awesome that was and how much less work it was then when we found the vertex by doing the negative b over 2a and then plugging that in, you remember that from like section 1 or 2 or something like that? I think it was section 2. Okay, anyway. Oh look, here it is again. You can check using your graphic calculator. Alright, so I want you to do this one as your lesson check. I want you to um, complete the square write it in vertex form, um, and then state what the vertex is and what your y-intercept is, and this is what I want you to share with your partner first when you get to class. So you could show them you watched the video and you did the lesson check and that you're ready to work on the worksheet for today. And then um, your homework will also be Math Excel Lesson 4-6. I hope you have a great night, and I hope I don't sound like this tomorrow. Okay, bye.